guys welcome back we crossed 800 subscribers like a month ago i think and i'm very 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 thankful for you guys and today's thanksgiving so i'm thankful for you <laughs> But anyway, I was going to say that this video is a continuation of the video in which I spoke about how I got into a university in London for my masters. In this video, I'll be talking more about accommodations, expenses, and I'll be answering your questions as well, which I asked you to send it to me on Instagram. I don't know why that sentence was so complicated, but yeah, I hope you get the point. I put up a story in my Instagram and asked you guys to send in questions related to accommodations, expenses, and just living here in general so a lot of you guys sent in your questions in future maybe if you want to be a part of such q and a's maybe follow me on instagram or if you don't want to be a part of my q and a's but you still want to follow me you can obviously follow me yeah let's get started with the video so this video as well i'll be dividing it in three parts the first part will be accommodation second part i'll be talking a little bit about expenses and in the third part i'll be answering your questions so let's get started with accommodation i don't know about uk i can't speak for the entire uk but in london from my experience i've seen there are a few types of um, accommodations the first type is like a rented room which i am currently in i've rented a room in an apartment so it is like an apartment there are many rooms so you can select one room from it and you share the toilet you share the bathroom and you share the kitchen and you share the living room if there is a living room in this house there is no living room in my previous house we had a living room but yeah that's that and the second type of accommodation is a rented apartment basically you own the entire apartment and it's usually a studio apartment or a one bedroom apartment and that can be a bit expensive because obviously you own the entire property and it's london obviously and the third type is a student accommodation uh which can be on campus or off campus by that i mean uh, some accommodations are right next to the university which means those accommodations are owned by the universities and it can be a bit expensive because it's right next to the university and the other type of student accommodation is where you actually book a student accommodation from a website and i'll be talking more about that in a few minutes but let me just um talk you through my journey of how i found my first ever accommodation in london it is a funny story that's why i wanted to share it with you guys so what happened was so me and my friend we were both initially going to look for a flat which had two bedrooms so that we don't have to live with strangers but it was quite expensive to find only two bedrooms and that too in london so we couldn't find that so we thought might as well uh, look for a four bedroom apartment in which we both can get two separate bedrooms so we did that it was not easy at all uh, to find rooms on on those websites so there are these websites where you can just rent a room and those are not student accommodation those are just rented rooms and these rooms can be used by anyone like students or professionals who are just working your people in general i mean those are not the only type of people but yeah you get my point we were looking at those websites and at first obviously it was new for us it was a very weird experience but a fun experience because you had to like filter out your preferences on that website and then it will show you different types of accommodation and some of the rooms were so creepy i don't know about others but at least the people i know we think that foreign mein bahut zyada hote hain <laughs> but uh, that's not the case i used to think that a lot because uh, some of my friends used to also tease me that oh you'll move abroad and udar bahut zyada hote because apne desi house mein we have this mandir no but here they don't have so i was like don't worry i'll carry my own ganpati and i did and i'm thankful that i have my own ganpati he protects me from all the evilness so yeah some of the houses look very haunted on the website and some of them looked really good like too good to be true at the beginning we were being too picky okay ki ye ghar ka ye acha nahi hai ye wo acha nahi hai as our you know move in date got closer we were like now we actually need to look for a i mean at least a practical apartment jisme hum log reh sakte hai because if we do nakhra no if we think like ye room mein ye acha nahi hai wo acha nahi hai ye kam hai ye zyada hai to kabhi nahi milega and that too in a fixed budget so we shortlisted like 10 15 apartments we followed up with the agents and it was a huge hassle call the agent talk to him ask him for the videos of the room ask him for the videos of the entire house and, and some of the agents don't even give you that some of the agents are like ha sab website pe udhar dekh lo but some of the nice ones they will send you videos they will do a video call for you but that is very rare also one more thing we were booking that 
rented a room from India. So we couldn't actually go and visit there. So one of our friends was staying here and we asked the agent that can our friend come there to see the house, video call us and make sure the house is actually okay. But they didn't allow that and we had to trust the pictures and we booked it. We paid the rent, we paid the deposit. Since I've moved three times, I know for a fact that when you book an accommodation, be it rental or student or whatever, you have to pay a deposit and you have to pay first month ka rent. So we had to pay that and that was a huge amount. We were very, very scared because this is the first time ever we are doing it and it's a big amount, it's also international transfer. Hai. So we were quite skeptical about it, but luckily everything was good. Touch wood. So uh, touch wood, everything was good. When we landed in London, we took a cab and then we went to that address. One of the weirdest things happened with us is that they didn't, since we are obviously coming from a different country, they had to give us the keys, right? We couldn't collect it beforehand, before moving into the apartment or the house. So they called us at a different location and luckily it was not shady. I think it was a good office. My friend went in there. I didn't go. I was in the cab with bags and stuff. But she went in there. She had to sign something, I think. And then she collected the keys for both of us. And then we went to the actual property. And when we saw it from outside, I was like, yeah, this is Google. Pe dekha tha. Google is like, yeah, so I think it will be fine. As we entered the property, the staircase was so narrow and we had like these huge bags. I don't know how we did it, but we somehow managed to carry those suitcases upstairs. And my room was on the first floor and her room was on the third floor. So that was a difficult journey but luckily we met one of our flatmates so he helped us with everything and also a very good thing about living in a rented room is that you live with all types of people all types of nationalities and it's just amazing actually i've been living like this since like nine months and i've met tons of people from different backgrounds different nationalities that's one good thing about living in a rented room i remember in my last flat i had italians living with me and they made this lasagna amazing so you get to experience all of that as well and let's talk about a uh, private accommodations so i didn't look much into that because i was not planning to rent a private room or a studio apartment because it's very expensive the rent is like what thousand it starts from thousand pounds which is one lakh rupees per month it was out, totally out of my budget i didn't do much research about it so i can't talk much about it but yeah those are expensive but if you want your own space and privacy you can obviously opt for that so speaking about student accommodation i am very happy to announce that I've partnered with Amber and we are going to help you guys find accommodation. So how I'm going to help you is by giving you a link and also by giving you 20 pounds off your first month's rent. It is a very super simple process. All you have to do is there will be a link in my description. You'll have to click that. Once you click the link, you'll see a website and there will be a form. You just have to fill in your personal details like your phone number and your email and your name. And then after you submit that form, you'll get a list of preferences. For example, they'll ask you how many people are moving in. So if you have a group of friends who are in the same university or who are looking to live in the same area, you all can book an accommodation in the same student accommodation ka building. So that is one good thing about it. The other good thing about it is that they ask for your budget, they ask for your university name because they will try and find accommodations near your university because here the travel expense is too much and I'll get to that later in the expenses while I segment but for now let me just tell you traveling in London is not cheap jitna ho sake try to save upon that and then uh, once you submit all of these details they will connect you to an agent and that agent will be guiding you through everything from the beginning to the end you don't have to chase any agent like how I did it's actually quite good because we don't want that type of stress in our lives they have a variety of accommodations and not just in London and not just in UK all over the world if you are planning to go to US Canada Australia Germany France and any country where students basically live they have accommodations they will help you find the accommodations they will help you get offers because Amber has really good offers all the time those offers will help you save a lot of money and that's amazing. One of the main things while uh, booking an accommodation is the paperwork. That is something we are not used to because in India, obviously, everything is done by our parents. And now we have to do everything on our own. So paperwork 
can be a bit boring and annoying but don't worry amber has got you <laughs> they will help you out with paperwork so one of their features which i really like and i'll tell you why is the covid-19 cancellation i'll give you a personal example okay so when i actually paid my deposit and my rent i faced a problem that my flight got cancelled and i told my agent that my flight got cancelled can you just hold that deposit or that month's rent use it for the next month because i don't think i'll be able to come in january because my flight got cancelled and the borders have shut down so he said no i can't do anything about it so basically we had to pay for that entire month even though i was not staying there but amber will help you get through such situations quite easily because they know what students are going through and by now everyone should know what covid-19 has done to us and everyone should be very considerate about it especially for students because obviously students spend so much money it's very difficult to you know just see your chunk of money being wasted over something you haven't even used okay now i'm going to read you through the types of accommodations they have wait hold on okay so the room types they have are uh, the entire place private room or a shared room and yeah you can also select the type of bathrooms you want because i know some people who are very picky about their bathroom situation i am actually okay with sharing bathroom with strangers but some people are not okay with that and amber has got you if you are one of those people they have options wherein you can choose if you want to share your bathroom or if you want your bathroom to be private if you go through these filters they will curate like a list for you and from that list you can like pick which one you actually like and all of the properties are so good looking everything is like furnished they have a study table proper wardrobes i mean it's just amazing and something every student dreams of that is it about amber and now let's talk about expenses which is the most boring part but also a very important part in my life and in our lives as students how do i start about this so when i first moved here to london everything obviously felt so expensive because i was constantly you know converting pounds to rupees rupees to pounds and i was like ye to itna expensive hai in india we wouldn't do that in india we wouldn't buy something so expensive is such a ghar pe kha lete is such a ghar pe karte is such a nahi lete but now now when i see something for 1 pound i don't even think i'm like okay it's just 1 pound let's take it but earlier i should be like oh 1 pound that means 100 rupees 100 rupees mein kitna kuch aa jayega isse acha nahi lete hue so now my thought process has changed a bit and it is not being very helpful because sab kuch ek ek pound ka main lene lag gayi to i don't know kya ho jayega so there are these stores where you get everything for a pound or in that range i mean 2 pounds 3 pound ka so that places are like heaven for me i always go into poundland poundland is the name of a store which you can find on almost every high street in london and they have like really good and cheap products it's like miniso basically miniso sells like i don't want to i don't want to talk bad about it sorry <laughs> but yeah i hope you get my point Poundland is very good. You get like containers, home stuff, cleaning का stuff, वो सब. That is all. That is all manageable. And I don't think it's very expensive because once you buy like essential stuff for your room or for your house or for your cleaning, एक बार लिया तो it's an investment kind of because it will run for like a longer period of time. Unlike food, food here is expensive. I mean, if you go out to eat, it's expensive. But if you try and cook at home. it's not that expensive i'll be very honest with you guys i have not been cooking a lot i'm not saying that i only eat bahar ka food but i i bring frozen food which is like a frozen pizza or frozen chapati or frozen what what else do i get yeah it's it's a bit difficult to cook when everything is going on when you have to go to campus when you have to go to work when you have to sit and do assignments that time you don't have time to cook and you might have to buy something food ho gaya घर का हो गया नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट ट्रांसपोर्ट माय फेवरेट टॉपिक ऑफ ऑल टाइम व्हाई आई लाइक टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस टॉपिक इज बिकॉज फर्स्टली ट्रांसपोर्ट इज वेरी वेरी एक्सपेंसिव योर सेकेंडली पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट योर इज वेरी इजी टू यूज इट्स लाइक एन असेंशियल बेसिकली यू हैव टू यूज इट अदरवाइज यू ऑब्वियसली कैन वॉक वेर एवर यू कैन वॉक टू ज्यादा नहीं चल सकते बिकॉज फर्स्टली इट्स वेरी कोल्ड इट कैन रेन एनी टाइम सो वेन यू आर वॉकिंग ठंडी की हवा आ जाएगी मैं तो उड़ जाती हूँ आई डोंट वॉट अदर्स सो आई ट्राई टू टेक द बस आई ट्राई to walk as much as i can at a point you have to resort to public transport but yeah it's expensive 
expensive because here the thing is first I'll talk about buses okay it's like a very interesting concept because we obviously don't have that in India so what you have to do here is you either get a oyster card so oyster card is like a card which is used for TFL TFL is transport for London which includes buses and trains and tubes you buy it and students get some discount to spay but I don't think it, it makes that much of difference so I took normal wala oyster card liya, which was for £5 and in that you have to keep on refilling money so that you can use it for buses and tubes. So how it works for buses is once you tap in, your £1.55 gets deducted from your card and then you can use that bus ka service for I think one hour or I think they have reduced it to 50 minutes. So wo 50 minutes mein jitna bhi bus you have to use, you can use it and it will only charge you 1.55. But wo agar exceed ho gaya, wo one hour exceed ho gaya and if you are still tapping, wapas 1.55 katega. That is, I think, okay. But the tubes are very expensive. So in London, there are these zones, okay? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to explain this because mujhe sab zones nahi pata. But so just imagine, okay, there is a line and there are these zones. I think there are six or five zones. Zone one se zone five jane ke liye, maximum i'm talking about peak car okay about peak car it will be three pounds three pounds is 300 rupees imagine that so when i first traveled by tube i was i said spent 300 rupees on a train ride in tubes they have off peak hours and off peak hours okay peak hours yeah they have peak hours and off peak hours so off peak hours will be I don't know the time slot but it's basically at that time when no one actually travels a lot and peak hours are obviously office hours and at that time the train fare increases and in off peak hours it is less. It is less by a pound. Tubes can be expensive so I try to take a bus whenever possible. Travelling is quite expensive, rent is expensive here and what else. I'm not going into much detail about um, expenses because I'm planning to film a video in which I'll be tracking my expenses what i spend in a week or what i spend in a day so that you guys get to know how much things cost here like the food or groceries so i'll make a proper video about it okay let's move on to your questions so the first question is did you have any relatives or anyone you know in london to help you settle um i do have a friend in london but i don't have any relatives in london i'm the first one from my family yeah i had to settle on my own which was fine, not that bad. Next, um, can you tell about weather? London's weather is quite unpredictable. You never know when it's sunny, you never know when it starts raining, you never know when it's windy, you never know when it's bright blue skies. It's mostly gloomy and rainy, but if you are lucky, you'll see a blue sky, you'll get some vitamin D. In summer, it can get really, really, really hot. I am from Mumbai, if anyone doesn't know. And when I'm telling you it's hot here, it is hot here. Either ki garmi, I don't know kuch alagi garmi. Since I moved in January, I was so used to the cold climate that when it was getting hot, it was like extremely hot for me. Please upload a vlog, please, I'm waiting. After this, I'm uploading a vlog, so don't worry. It's in Jan 22 intake and I don't know any other student who I could share a rent with or travel to London with or share a rent with me, could you suggest anything for my situation? If you don't know anyone from your university, it's totally fine because even I didn't know anyone. For my university, they had like these groups on Facebook and I was a part of a group which was called Southeast Asia Applicants. Those who are from Southeast Asia and who are going to the University of Westminster where I am. Someone put up a post on that group asking ki uh, we are going in Jan 2020. Nee. September 2020 who all are joining that same intake so I said I am and then they added me to a whatsapp group but unfortunately I couldn't go in September because of the entire situation which I explained in my previous video and I don't want to talk about it now otherwise I'll get angry so if you want to know what I'm talking about go watch that video I'll link it up somewhere here or below this video since we used to discuss rent we used to discuss ki uh -huh, kisko kidar rehna hai wo sab, wo sab. so you yeah you'll make friends and if you're lucky enough you'll find someone who wants to move in with you did you book your apartment just by seeing images on the internet? I usually get sus on those websites. Yeah, I did actually look at images and book it. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. I am hanging by a thread, but I'm okay. I'm surviving. <laughs> Thank you for asking though. I wanted to know about the job opportunities in marketing in UK. Do they prefer freshers? Um, I didn't give my background in the introduction, but I'm giving it now. Hi, I'm Pranali. I'm a 22 year old master's student in London and I'm doing my master's in marketing communications. That is why they asked me that question. 
talking about job opportunities in marketing in UK. So I think there are quite a few opportunities. There are really good marketing firms and agencies here. UK is known for having good opportunities in marketing, business or finance. If you are looking at such fields, you should consider that. Do they prefer freshers? It depends from each company and what they are looking for. If they are looking to hire interns, you might be lucky and they might uh, hire you as even though if you are a fresher, you can always look at smaller firms or you can always look at start startups which are always looking for interns or freshers so that even they gain some experience and even they are able to give them experience wait hold on i got a call next question can you get a part time job there yeah you can there are tons of opportunities for part time job earlier there wasn't a lot of part time job ka options because of covid and uh, lockdown but now since everything is opened since it's christmas there are a lot of job opportunities i mean part time job opportunities can you tell me about the pr in london can students get pr there yes students can get pr here and i don't want to give you any false information to be honest i have not done much research about pr but all i know is that there is criteria which you have to fit in to get pr but before that you have to work for like a set amount of years and you have to earn a set amount of salary then only you'll get pr and before even getting your pr you have to apply for as a student okay you have to apply for the post study work visa it's called psw visa so i'm going to do that after my masters so that is my next step and once i'm done with that i'll help you with that i like to help you guys with my experience and not just state facts just for the sake of it because i think experiences only teach you a lot i'm getting too philosophical i know can you manage your expenses from your part time job yes you can uh, so the part time jobs here do give you a good amount of money and you can afford like your normal expenses and it depends what you want to spend it on i spend my earnings on my rent because and i like paying my rent because it lowers the burden on my parents for giving me so much money for a month okay so this person has asked what is the total cost of moving plus the university fee so if you are talking about the flight ka cost for me it was 90000 rupees because i was flying at during the peak of covid and the borders had just open up so the rates were quite high and now also they are quite high i think it's 1.5 lakh rupees to travel from mumbai to london <coughs> sorry guys <coughs> how much house rent electricity gas and water bill you pay so a good thing about the place where i'm living in right now and where i have lived in before is that all of the bills were included in my rent so i didn't have to pay anything extra or anything separately for my rent uh, for my bills my university fee was 19000 pounds but i got a scholarship so it was 18000 pounds for me basically i saved 1 lakh rupees and i did mention this in my previous video so if you have any more university related doubt sorry if you want to know anything more about universities please i highly recommend you to watch that video because that video has been helpful to a lot of people and and that is the feedback which i have gotten from it and yeah how much is my house rent my rent is 650 pounds the first ever house was 780 then it was 550 and the same house where it was 550 they increased the rent to 600 because lockdown had gaya tha yahan pe the prices were increasing for everything so they increased the rent also so i said okay bye bye i am not living here anymore because that room was too tiny for 600 pounds to be honest and i wanted a bigger room and near we are in a bigger room but पेइंग अ लिटिल एक्स्ट्रा वहाँ अकोमोडेशन कैसे मिला आपको और वहाँ का क्लाइमेट में कितना टाइम लगा सेट होने कितना टाइम लगा सो ये अकोमोडेशन एज आई मैंशन डॉलियर आर आर दीज वेबसाइट्स वेर यू कैन रेंट अ रूम and which is not a student accommodation i will make it very clear it's not a student accommodation is just a room to rent speaking about me settling in the climate it took me a while i'm still not very used to it i still don't know how to dress for the weather but i think i might figure it out soon and i'll let you know if i do what course are you exactly doing if you have more university related questions you can obviously watch my video but for now i'll answer your question because you sent it so kindly um i am doing masters in marketing communications okay i think those are all my questions and i remember someone was asking me about yeah psw i think i answered the question about psw so if you want to apply for psw you have to wait until you get your graduation certificate and then only you can apply so i have to wait for that and then only i can apply so i think i covered everything and it was good talking about all of this because i 
really think such videos help you because when I was moving, there were people who made such videos, but I think everyone's experiences add up together and they give you like an idea of what you can expect and what you shouldn't expect from certain countries or cities. That was it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. And once again, thank you so much, Amber, for um, choosing me as your partner and helping my subscribers to find their accommodation. I hope you guys um, use the link and if you find an accommodation, please do let me know because I'll be super, super interested to see what your accommodation looks like if you actually book through me and it would be awesome actually. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! And I will try to help all of you um, who, 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 and the other type of student, student, <laughs>